That's a wrong way to do it. That's playing the money game. Hey, welcome back. Derek Hagen here. I see the world through meaningful living and uh, I bring that kind of lens to these videos. So we're checking out Ren again. I'm on, in the middle of a Ren fest, checking out all these Ren videos. Uh, so when I view these videos, I'm looking at it through meaningful living, which mindfulness, personal values, mindsets, resilience, uh, everything that makes life worth living. Now, I'm here with uh, a song called Sick Boy, at least the video is called Sick Boy. I, I checked out a video called Sick Boy that turned out to be like his his personal journey, which I totally missed. I thought it was, you know, that was, I think, my third time seeing him at my, my third video and I thought it was maybe trying to generalize things and and give a, a take on society but I think it was more of a personal here's what actually happened to him video uh, but again I'm still new to this so tell me what I got wrong there so this sick boy spelled the same but it only came out six days ago so I don't know what uh, what we're getting into so without further ado let's check it out if you're new here I go through once just to check it out and absorb it and see what, what it looks like. Uh, no pauses, no anything. And then I go through a second time. You don't have to stick around for that if you don't want to. Second time, uh, I'll add any commentary that, that might matter. I'll, I'll try to see what what the perspective looks like through my lens of meaningful living. But let's, let's check it out. <laughs> Hello, my dear friends. You're not here by mistake. There is a reason curiosity made you crawl into this rabbit hole today. Inside you, as inside me, there is an unsleeping feeling that lures away at you from the inside. A feeling that you were made for something more. In a world where we crave digital validation like an opiate, a world of swipe right fast food romance, a world where we crave purpose and construct our identities around the things that we own. It's easy to fall through the cracks in the pavement and to begin to feel worthless. So we medicate with monotony, distract ourselves with rinse and repeat reruns, misplace ambition and ferociously expand our empires until they render the fertile ground we stand upon to dust. We are all searching for something. We all crave purpose. Human beings, through a genetic ballet, have evolved into creatures with superior intellect that has placed us at the very top of the animal kingdom. And what do you do with this gracious gift, my friend? You consume, eat, devour everything that we call home. You would eat yourselves if given the chance. But fear not, my friends. There is another way. Homeostasis. We must become symbiotic to our surroundings, for they are all that we have. We construct false hierarchies where we place the greedy and the self-interested upon golden pedestals, and instead exist as a harmonious cell inside a glorious machine. The great irony of humankind is that we have the brains to guide us, and we have the legs to carry us, and we choose to walk off the face of the cliff. There is another way. So did I just watch a promo video for the new album? <laughs> uh, or... Man, there was a lot of facts in there. Shit, I even... He uses the word purpose. That's what I do. So... Well... I've got nothing to... Nothing to add other than I thought I was getting a song. But I got kind of a... I don't know. What was it? What was that? A message? Or... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> I'm speechless right now. Uh, I did like all the, the video game uh, references and, and sounds and, and all that. It reminded me of Pac-Man a lot, a uh, product of the 80s and 90s. So let's check it out again and see what, what he's got going on and see if there's anything we can learn. 
Hello, my dear friends. You're not here by mistake. There is a reason curiosity made you crawl into this rabbit hole today. There is a reason. So, I, there, one of the elements of meaningful living, there's purpose, which he's going to talk about later. There is uh, significance, which is feeling that life has value. So that's kind of where personal values fall. But then the third one is a sense of coherence. And coherence just means story that makes sense. Life has to make sense. And this is where your mindsets live. And how are you seeing the world and what story are you telling yourself? What's the meaning for different events and how do you shape that into your life story? Uh, so he just said, there's a reason that you came here. There's some coherent reason that you showed up here right now. Inside you, as inside me, there is an unsleeping feeling that lures away at you from the inside. A feeling that you were made for something more. Correct. Uh, and that is what Viktor Frankl talks about. Uh, if you've not seen any of my other videos, I often talk about him. He's one of the, maybe even the, first person to start thinking about the world through purpose and meaning. He used them kind of interchangeably, uh, as many people do. That's not quite accurate, but he wrote a book, The Man, or just Man's Search for Meaning, where he says that finding meaning in life is our main striving and we distract ourselves with other things or we do things to try to find meaning but those aren't actually there um so 100 percent from right. the inside a feeling that you were made for something more right so you were made for something more meaning this is the purpose element i have something useful something valuable to you in a world to do where with we my crave digital validation like an opiate and that's a that's a Bar too, because this is this has been long known, at least to me. I don't know how common it, how widespread it is. Cell phones. I, I was gonna grab mine. I don't know where it is. Cell phone is addicting. A smartphone, at least. Social media, especially. It it generates dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical that's released when you drink alcohol, smoke pot, nicotine, have sex, eat sugar achieve a goal and hit that goal, win a game, that mechanism, bam, it keeps you going. It keeps you wanting more. Uh, Dopamine-based systems are going to be short run in nature because as soon as you hit that goal, now you need to redirect and go find something else, which is why this is uh, a little bit on the fringes of, of my expertise, but there's other non-dopamine-based brain chemicals that we can try to achieve instead, like uh, oxytocin and, and uh, uh, serotonin which you get those more from being with friends, being with family, feeling like you belong to a group. Uh, and it's it's more long-term and sustainable rather than bam, one time. Um, but anyway, so the point is they create dopamine, which makes them very addictive. Now we have age limits on things like alcohol and tobacco and marijuana and these kinds of things, but there is no age limit on cell phones, and so we give these very addictive dopamine-creating devices to our kids without it, without even thinking about it. And then we wonder why they're addicted to them, and then we wonder why they're comparing themselves to the wrong people, comparing themselves to a curated version of their friends' lives instead of like just going out and living their lives. They are very addictive cell phones. In a world where we crave digital validation like an opiate, a world of swipe right fast food romance, a world where we crave purpose and construct our right Crave purpose, which is exactly what Viktor Frankl says. Right fast food romance, a world where we crave purpose and construct our identities around the things that we own. That's a wrong way to do it. That's playing the money game to try to... If I'm understanding money game correctly, and I, as I listen to it, that's how I define the money game. This fellow here that he found a clip for, look at me, I'm a portion. So you're creating your identity. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. I didn't think I was going to talk about this. Mindfulness, mindfulness meditation is practice to become more mindful. More mindful means just being more aware of what it is like to exist right now. Uh, the idea being, say, things like the past only exist as a thought. They only exist in your mind. The future only exists in your mind as a thought, as anticipation. The only thing that you ever experience is the present moment. 
when you get really good at this, and this takes some practice, but when you get really good at this, everything can, can be recognized as a pattern of energy. An emotion is just a pattern of energy plus a story. And think about this for a second. If you've ever felt nervous or if you've ever felt excited, those, they feel the same in your body. If you pay close enough to ten, attention to the raw sensations of those feelings, in one of those, you're saying, here's the raw sensation and there's something scary I'm about to do. Then I'm going to call that nervous. I'm feeling the same pattern of energy, but I'm about to do something really fun, but maybe a little dangerous, like uh, skiing or something. Now I call it excitement. Same pattern of energy, different story. Now, so much of mindfulness-based meditation and mindfulness-based training is breaking identity. You don't have to identify with anything. You don't have to identify with your thoughts. You aren't your thoughts. You have thoughts. You don't have to identify with your emotions. You aren't angry. You aren't sad. You're feeling angry. And you're feeling sad. And if you really get wrapped up in this, like this person on the screen right up here, you can be wrapped up in my identity is I am a whatever this is. I'm not a car guy. Is that a Lamborghini or a Porsche? I am a Lamborghini owner. I'm trying to make that my identity. This is a problem. This is going to set you up for failure because if you are, if your purpose in life, if your goal is to make money, and if your goal is to make money to buy material things, you're going to lose that game. You just are. Because there's never going to be enough. You're never going to have... It's never going to be satisfied. It's an endless pit. Uh, so this is a game that's not worth playing. It's easy to fall through the cracks in the pavement yes. and to begin to feel worthless. So we medicate with monotony, distract ourselves with rinse and repeat reruns, misplace ambition. And, and so we self-medicate because instead of facing, well, I mean, there's so many level or layers to this because uh, I probably don't even know that I'm playing the wrong game. Like I'm playing this game because I thought I was supposed to. Didn't even occur to me that I didn't have to. I love this. There's a, a artist named Billy Joel. He's got a song called Scenes from Italian Restaurant. If you don't know that song, that's a that's a my favorite song. It's it's a whole it's a it's red like. It's it's like a rock opera, but um, scenes from an Italian restaurant. There's a line in there that says, "We never knew we could want more than that out of life." And if you meditate on that, we never knew we could want more than that out of life. Because you have this box, and this box says, here's what I'm supposed to like, here's what I'm supposed to do, here's what I'm supposed to, to be. And if, if this is what I was given was the money game, then I don't even know that there's anything else to do. So other layers are, I'm, I'm trying to play this game and I'm not good at it, or I won the game, I got the Lamborghini and I still feel like shit, and I still don't know if my friends like me for me or if they like me for my car, and I don't know if then you have to uh, to medicate. Or you don't have to, but people people do. You definitely don't have to because mindfulness to loop that back around is the, the process of feeling sad or despair or fear or whatever it is and seeing that the emotion rise and the emotions fall uh, and they might even have some information for you. But then it's uncomfortable. And we're taught in the West, you shouldn't feel bad. You shouldn't feel awful. And therefore, if you do, you got to do something to alleviate it. And that's that's the problem that he said it's easy to fall through the cracks because that's our default mode. And ferociously expand our empires until they render the fertile ground we stand upon to dust. That's heartbreaking, man. That, that what was he, a, an orangutan goes up and he tries to push that, push that Band back our early. empires until they render the fertile ground we stand upon to dust. We are all searching for something. Yep. We all Meet. crave purpose. Human Remember. beings, through a genetic ballet, have evolved into creatures with superior intellect that has placed us at the very top of the animal kingdom. I agree with most of that. The, the thing that I'm not quite sure about is, is the value judgment of top. Why are we the top? In what, in what lens are we the top of the animal kingdom? Is it the food chain? I, I guess I could get behind that. Uh, because I'm higher intellectually, does that mean that I'm better than a wolf or an octopus? 
again, I am a human, so I'm, I'm very inclined to say yes. But then again, an octopus and the wolf, they don't have mental disorders. <laughs> so I, I have a mentor of mine who said that there's only four humans that experience mental disorder, what we're labeling as mental disorders. It's just the same guy that thinks we're over-pathologizing. And if you feel bad, then you have this disorder and you can go get that medicine. You, know, you, can, you just need to get better at feeling bad, is his point. But to further this line of, th of, of thinking down, he says... There's four animals that develop mental disorders. Okay, lab rats, or lab animals, uh, pets, zoo, animals kept in a zoo, human beings. What do those four have in common? They're taken out of nature. Right? And we, we're, we don't get to get to, I mean, he brings up homeostasis later. We don't have a sense of balance. We don't have this sense of break even or, uh, of, I guess, balance balance in our in our lives so that's an interesting, an interesting way to, to think about it so am i better than these animals that do get to or that don't suffer from the same mental problems that i have i i'm inclined to say yes but i'm not so quick to say yes because i it just is something is i don't know about and what do you do with this gracious gift my friend you consume eat devour Everything that we call home. You would eat destroying the planet yourselves if given the chance. But fear not, my friends. There is another way. Homeostasis. We must become symbiotic to our surroundings. For they are all that we have. Deconstruct false hierarchies where we Deconstruct false hierarchies, yep. Place the greedy and the self-interested upon golden pedestals. And instead, exist as a harmonious cell inside a glorious machine. The great irony of humankind is that we have the brains to guide us, and we have the legs to carry us, and we choose to walk off the face of the cliff. What do you do with this gift? You waste it. There is another way. The other way is game over. <laughs> I love that shaking. Coming soon, yep. Well, that is a clever... It is a clever... promo video. But anyway, uh, I, I talked my, my head off there. Uh, this, to me, was a meaning and purpose. I mean, this is really... big picture stuff. Looking at the forest. Uh, but there was meaning and purpose stuff. There was paying attention stuff. There was gratitude messages in there uh, all good things but how did you take this uh, how how did you interpret this let me know in the comments let me know what you disagree with and let me know what else i should check out till then i'll see you next time